Hello. This is the Taya Conceptor tutorial from its creator. As you may know, Taya is a program created by 3D Artist. And I want to show how I see this program, for what it was conceived, and how it can be used most effectively. As for the origin of the name, Thea is the name of the planet, which according to one theory hit the Earth in the past, and led to the formation of the Moon. The name of the planet has a different spelling in English. I changed it a little for ease of memorization. You will quickly get used to Taya, since the interface is something in between the interface of Photoshop and 3D editors. As for the difference in UI between Proly Brush and Taya the UI has been redone from scratch. In addition to differences in design and compactness, the new interface can stretch to any resolution of any monitor. The idea of the program is to quickly assemble models from brushes. Several hundred brushes are already included in Taya, and you are free to use them. But you can also make your brushes from your models. It's not complicated, like brushes in Photoshop, only in 3D, and is done in a few clicks. Thereby you can speed up the process of creating your work. The result of work in Taya is a 3D object that can be used in different ways. You can simply save it as an edge and use it in other 3D programs. The number of polygons depends on the brushes you used. If you are a 2D artist, you can export it as an image, remove the background, make overpaint. Also, it is possible, for example, to export the result as a texture, even seamless. To use it as a bump or displacement texture or just as alpha for a brush in another 2D or 3D program. Therefore, to start using Taya, it is enough to try drawing using ready-made brushes, which there are a lot. Next, it's advisable to get used to controlling the camera and work plane, to draw in space and use Taya to create three-dimensional scenes too. And then you can learn how to create your brushes. Everything else is an auxiliary tools for changing what is already painted or additional tools useful in special cases. Work plane is a canvas, in fact, an infinite plane on which you draw. The idea is that the work plane can have any position, and the strokes remain where they were painted. That is, if you want to draw a three-dimensional object, you need to more often change the position of the work plane during drawing. As with all 3D editors, you need to rotate the camera as often as possible to see the location of objects in the scene and the position of the work plane. This is the main and almost the only thing you need to get used to in Taya for effective work. In the navigation settings window shown at startup, you can see all camera and work plane hotkeys. And also choose your habitual way to control the camera. But I recommend using Maya navigation style in Taya because it's handy to use with work plane and easy to remember. Alt and hold mouse buttons, camera control, control and hold mouse buttons, work plane control. When I say a mouse, I mean the stylus of a tablet, because Taya is a drawing program. It will be convenient for you if you configure the stylus buttons as three different mouse buttons. If you don't want to use one of the stylus buttons as the middle button, you can use the space bar on the keyboard instead. These key combinations are used to rotate, pan and zoom the camera, as well as four similar actions with the work plane, moving it at its plane, moving along its z-axis and rotation. Since the work plane is infinite, these actions relate to its pivot, that is, the local coordinate system. There are a few more keys that are often used in Taya. Key to center the camera on the object, default, F. A key to center the camera on the work plane, by default, control plus A. And of course, escape, to reset the position of the work plane. First press on escape as a reset to 90 degrees. Second press on escape reset in position to the origin too. By the way, Taya forbids drawing at very large angles of rotation of the camera to the work plane, so as not to accidentally draw long strokes to infinity. The radius of the brush tool can be changed by holding the right mouse button over the viewport. Also, you can always see and change the value of the radius in the brush panel. The brush library is divided into two parts, your brushes and shared brushes. In the shared library, brushes of other users who allowed them to use freely. At the top of the panel, there are buttons for managing the library, save all brushes, create a new brush, copy it or delete it. Don't be afraid to experiment with the settings. The changes are saved only in your part of the library. To save changes in another author's brush, you can copy it to yourself by pressing the clone button. Change and save as yours. At the top of the brush panel, there are sculpting brushes. But Taya is not a sculpting program. These tools are added only for a small correction of models without leaving Taya. Most often, 
The move brush is used. It smoothly moves the vertices of the model. To invert sculpt brushes, you can hold the control key while using them. So, the new brush button adds a new brush to the library. This creates the simplest round brush, which repeats the circular section, like the default one in Photoshop, but in 3D. For speed, there is an Add button for adding a new brush based on any image file and a button for creating a brush from any object in the scene. In these cases, the brush settings are automatically selected. After creation, the object is stored in the brush and changing the brush does not affect the source file. You can configure it in any other brush simply by double-clicking on the brush or by clicking in it. You can keep settings panel open to immediately try new options. So, brush settings. The idea for all brushes is common. Each brush inside itself is a 3D object that is used to create the brush stroke. This object is called a brush form and can be used in different ways. The way how form makes the brush stroke can be chosen in the stroke tab. Here you can select the following options. Kit bash brushes or simply rotating the object and places it in the middle of the trajectory. Stretch type stretches the object along the path. The form cloning brushes copy an object many times along the trajectory. Section type is good to use when there are very few vertices in the form. It uses them as a section when creating a brush stroke, and does not use the form directly as a 3D object. Below you can configure it in more detail, whether to keep the proportions of the object to deform it, or change the settings of the normals, if necessary. On the form tab, you can change the object stored inside the brush. Here are buttons for loading or saving the brush form to a file, changing the position of the form and the direction of its normals. In the 3D preview, the vertical axis indicates the direction of motion of the stroke. For section brushes, the buttons for adding and moving the vertices of the section are displayed here. As I already said, in them the vertices of the form are simply connected and turned to create a section. The ability to create brushes from any 3D models already creates enormous opportunities. But besides this, you can also add modifiers that will also change the shape of the brush strokes. Their interface inside the brushes is similar to the brush settings in Photoshop, but presented as a user-selectable list, since there are a lot more modifiers. For example, you can add the rotate modifier and rotate the form 180 degrees. If you choose not const, but middle dependency, for example, then the rotation angle will increase in the middle of the brush stroke. You can add several different modifiers and get different brushes using the same form. The radius of the brush and 90 degrees rotation are often used and placed out separately on the brushes panel, so they can be adjusted at any time. In this case, they are set for all brushes at once. The slicer parameter adds polygons when they are not enough when you stretch a brush stroke. Inside the tab, you can adjust the multiplier of the number added sections. In addition to the above parameters, you may notice the following settings. Image-based brushes, where an image is used as a brush form. These settings are rarely used, but you can try experimenting with them. And the sculpting brush type. The modifiers in these brushes change the object on which you draw, not the brush stroke. In the web and name panel, you can name and category to brush to make it easier to find in the library. There is also a setting for access to the brush. By default, all brushes are set to private, public. Setting allows other users to use your brush in their work. That is, you can set public for some of your brushes. Then these brushes will be uploaded to the server and will be visible to other users in the shared brush library. You can set the setting back to private at any time, and the brushes will be deleted from the server and the shared library. Brushes can only be public in the official categories. They are marked with the TIA icon. You can do your brush categories at the bottom of the panel. Empty categories are deleted automatically. Even though brushes are the main tool for creating models, in TIA there are several more ways to create them. Rather, they relate to experimental tools that are not so universal but can nevertheless be useful in some cases. Lathe is a tool for creating bodies of revolution. It's very simple. You draw a trajectory, and Taya creates a model of this shape by turning a line around the axis. The axis, the number of polygons, their optimization, can be customized. The section of the model also does not have to be round and is configured on the same panel. The tools at the bottom do not use drawing, but the skeleton, to be precise, are recreated by points. The buttons for editing the skeleton are described at the bottom of the screen, left mouse button, and a node. Hold down the right mouse button, select the node and move it. Hold down the right mouse button and, tab, at the same time, 
change the radius of the node. In the process, the skeleton is not part of the scene until you convert it to geometry. Also, the skeleton, although it consists of interconnected bones, is not related to animation and cannot be exported. At least in the current version of Taya. Rig Tool. It uses a skeleton to deform existing objects. Click Rig to snap the object to the bones. Move the bones as you need and click Unbind to unlink the object back. The Veneery Mesh tool can turn a skeleton into geometry. This tool is useful for creating the base mesh of a living creature for further completion. The nodes which are close to each other are merged together. Sometimes it is convenient to make limbs and even wings with it. For example, the option Membrane adds a membrane where possible between the branches of the skeleton to turn the bones into geometry and add it to the scene. Click Drop to Scene. The list of objects in the scene is located on the panel at the bottom left. Initially, there is only one object and all brush strokes are created in it. You can make several different objects for convenience, switch between them, group and even cut them into parts. Frequently used actions are located directly on the panel. New object, clear, delete. The remaining actions are performed through the object menu. You can lock some objects or turn off the lighting for some. This is convenient. For example, if in one layer you have a sketch of the model, and in others you draw a detailed version of it. Tail workflow is based on drawing, so there are no classic tools like create a sphere or create a box. Basic primitives can be done with brushes. Nevertheless, modifiers for changing objects are exist in Taya. They are used inside brushes, but can also be used separately. They can be selected through the Object Up and Modificators list menu or by clicking the button near the brush tool. This is a list of modifiers divided into categories. After selecting the modifier in its settings, you need to click Apply to change the object in the scene. Modifiers for moving, rotating and scaling an object are made as separate tools in a way familiar to many. For them you don't need to click Apply. They are applied immediately. It is worth noting the Remesh modifier. It unites the entire geometry of the object into a solid surface, if possible. At the same time, it reduces the number of polygons and smooths out details. Therefore, it is convenient to use it to generalize forms when you think about some draft concept. It can be used, either from the list of modifiers or via button click on the layer panel. The convenience of its use as a modifier is that it is not necessary to apply it immediately. You can add a modifier and continue drawing, and apply it when you need to unite geometry. In Taya there is the ability to draw with symmetry. Mirror and radial symmetry settings are selected in the menu panel at the top. World Symmetry works relative to zero coordinates. Workplane Symmetry works in the workplane coordinate system. You can use several types of symmetry at the same time. Symmetry works not only in brushes. You can also use it with lathe or bones. There is also a symmetry modifier provided if you want to add it later, and not immediately during drawing. Near to the symmetry, there are settings for improving the drawing trajectory. You can enable drawing deceleration and smoothing the path, or for example, enable rounding of rotation angles value. To get used to Taya, I recommend trying to use it to paint 2D alpha textures. This mode is can be enabled at the menu at the top, Alpha Exporter. This is a pretty useful mode, you can very quickly get a result suitable for use in other programs. And most importantly, you can get used to the brushes, and after that, to the entire three-dimensional tear workflow. It is very simple. Turn on the mode in the Alpha Exporter menu, Draw. Y coordinate means the brightness of the texture. In the corner, you can see a preview. The camera position does not affect the texture. Press Export. The texture is ready, and it's seamless. This can be disabled. In general, in this mode, it's convenient to gradually get used to controlling the camera and work plane. Because even if you don't use them, you will get an excellent result. And gradually you get used to the navigation, and will be able to draw in Taya in 3D. Taya has several viewport rendering modes. Taya's render is for previewing your models, or for those cases when you want to use the exported screenshot as a base for overpainting. Taya often extends with new features. You can increase the number of displayed tools through the Settings Enable Experimental Tools menu. Such tools, for example, include Boolean. By the way, Taya has its screen capture. Most of this video was made using it. Its main convenience is that Taya itself deletes parts of the video when you press Ctrl Z single quote and speeds up the video where you don't draw. The recording goes to frame by frame. G different models are handy to create in different ways. There are ready-made brushes that are perfect for certain types of models. You can also come up with your brushes and your ways to use them. Now I will show some examples based on brushes included in Taya. 
All public brushes in Tay are free to use, and you can repeat in your works what I'm showing now. One of the most spectacular and simple applications of Taya is the creation of carved furniture, interiors. Brushes that stretch simple geometric shapes are well suited for this. This is how brushes in this style already included in Taya look like. You will save a lot of time. For example, when creating Baroque architecture or Victorian style interior, the lathe tool can also be useful. For example for columns or fountains. Taya is convenient to use to come up with an unusual form of a creature, and in some cases, create a model from muscles, bones, shells, and even finished limbs. Brushes for these purposes mostly also have simple settings for stretching a single object. The difference from architecture brushes is that they use models of body parts inside. Brushes for mechanics are usually the simplest. These are either the same stretching brushes or kit bash brushes with disabled deformation on the stretch. In this case, you simply assemble the model like a constructor. Plants are more random and have an internal variety of forms. Therefore, it's good to use modifiers and brushes that make each stroke even more unique. For example, modifiers rotate, spherify or any other deformation modifiers. Of course, these are just a few of the areas in which you can use Taya. Use it to come up with rememberable concepts, and create 3D scenes with a huge amount of detail at the same great speed. This is a universal auxiliary tool for modern CG artists.